It was a dark and stormy night, the kind of night that sends shivers down your spine and makes you question your decisions. I had just moved into a quiet suburban neighborhood, seeking solace from the chaos of the city. Little did I know my pursuit of tranquility would lead me into the heart of a nightmare. The rain had been relentless, a torrential downpour that showed no signs of letting up. I had just settled into my new home, a cozy bungalow tucked away at the end of a quiet cul-de-sac. It was the perfect place to escape the hustle and bustle of the city and start fresh. But as the night wore on, I couldn't shake the eerie feeling that something was amiss. I had been unpacking boxes when I first noticed it, a shadow moving in the house next door. The house had been vacant for as long as I could remember, and the windows were shrouded in darkness. But now, a flickering light emanated from one of the upstairs windows. I couldn't help but wonder who could possibly be there. The rain continued to pour, masking any sound that might have given me a clue as to what was happening next door. I watched in silence as the light danced and swayed behind the curtains. It was then that I saw him, a figure standing in the window staring directly at me. A chill ran down my spine, and I quickly averted my gaze. I told myself it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, that the stress of the move had finally caught up with me. But as I continued to unpack, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Hours passed, and the rain showed no signs of letting up. I decided to call it a night, hoping that a good night's sleep would banish my fears. But as I lay in bed, the sound of footsteps echoed through the house. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I knew I was alone in the house and the footsteps were coming from the direction of the vacant house next door. I gathered my courage and slowly made my way downstairs, grabbing a baseball bat for protection. The rain drummed against the windows, drowning out the sound of my racing heart. I approached the front door, hesitating for a moment before unlocking it and stepping outside. The yard was drenched, and the darkness was impenetrable. I strained my eyes, trying to make out any movement, that's when I saw him again, standing at the edge of my property, his eyes gleaming in the dim light. My voice quivered as I called out, Who are you? What do you want? He didn't respond, just stood there, a menacing silhouette against the stormy night. I took a step closer, determined to confront him. But as I approached, he vanished into thin air, as if he had never been there at all. My heart raced, and I retreated back inside, locking the door behind me. I couldn't explain what had just happened, but I knew I needed to find out more about my mysterious neighbor. The next day, I decided to do some research. I discovered that the house next door had once belonged to a man named Walter Hartman. He had been a recluse, rarely seen by the neighbors. Rumors had circulated about strange occurrences in the house, but no one had ever been able to confirm them. As I delved deeper into my investigation, I stumbled upon a newspaper article from several years ago. It reported that Walter Hartman had disappeared without a trace on a rainy night much like the one I had experienced. The police had searched the house but found nothing, and the case had eventually gone cold. The more I uncovered about Walter Hartman, the more I became convinced that I had encountered his restless spirit. But why had he chosen to reveal himself to me? What did he want? The rain continued to pour in the days that followed, and my nights were plagued by strange noises and eerie shadows. I couldn't escape the feeling that Walter Hartman was trying to communicate with me, to tell me something that had remained hidden for years. One night as I lay in bed, I heard a faint whisper in the wind. It was a name, barely audible, but unmistakable. Eleanor. I didn't know anyone by that name but I couldn't shake the feeling that it was important. I decided to dig deeper into Walter Hartman's past, searching for any connection to someone named Eleanor. It didn't take long before I uncovered a shocking revelation. Eleanor had been Walter's daughter, and she had disappeared on the same night as him. It was as if the pieces of the puzzle were finally coming together. Walter Hartman's restless spirit had been trying to lead me to the truth, to uncover the mystery of his daughter's disappearance. The rain, the whispers, the eerie encounters, it had all been a desperate plea for help. 
Determined to unravel the mystery, I reached out to the authorities and shared my findings. Together, we reopened the case, and after months of investigation, we discovered the shocking truth. Eleanor had been a victim of foul play, and her body was found buried in the backyard of her own home. Walter Hartman's spirit had finally found peace, knowing that his daughter's killer had been brought to justice. As for me, I couldn't shake the feeling that my encounter with the supernatural had been a necessary part of the journey to uncover the truth. The rain had finally stopped, and the once eerie house next door was now silent and empty. But I would never forget that rainy night, the night I had come face to face with a restless spirit and helped bring closure to a long forgotten tragedy. It was a night that would haunt me forever, a night that had revealed the darkest secrets of my new neighborhood. It was a rainy night in mid-October when this terrifying encounter with my creepy neighbor unfolded. I was about 16 years old at the time, living in a quiet suburban neighborhood. My family had just moved into a charming old house at the end of the street, and while the house itself had character, the neighbors were something else entirely. Our new home was nestled amidst towering oak trees that creaked eerily in the wind. That evening, a thunderstorm was in full swing casting ominous shadows through the windows. My parents were out for the night, leaving me alone with my younger sister, Sarah. The first unsettling incident happened around 9 p.m. when I heard a strange noise outside. I had been engrossed in a book, trying to ignore the pounding rain and the occasional flicker of the power. At first, I thought the noise was just a part of the storm, perhaps a branch scratching against a window. But when I heard it again, I decided to investigate. I cautiously made my way to the window facing our neighbor's house, which was separated from ours by a narrow alley. The rain distorted my view, but through the water-streaked glass, I could see someone standing by their fence. It was our neighbor, Mr. Porter. Mr. Porter was an odd character. He lived alone and rarely spoke to anyone. People in the neighborhood said he had lived there for decades but kept to himself earning him the reputation of a recluse. I'd seen him a few times, but he always seemed to avoid eye contact. In the dim glow of the street lamp, I watched as Mr. Porter paced back and forth along the fence, muttering to himself. His unkempt hair stuck to his wet clothes as rain poured down on him. Something about his demeanor sent shivers down my spine. I decided to wake up Sarah, not wanting to be alone in this unsettling situation. She joined me at the window, her wide eyes reflecting my unease. As we watched Mr. Porter, his behavior grew even more bizarre. He started talking louder, words muffled by the storm. I know you're in there, he shouted, his voice trembling with rage. I see you watching me. My heart raced, and I grabbed my phone to dial 911, but the power was out, leaving the device dead. Sarah and I exchanged worried glances, unsure of what to do next. Just then, a brilliant flash of lightning illuminated the street, followed by a deafening crack of thunder. In that brief moment, we saw Mr. Porter's face twisted into a deranged grin. It was a sight that would haunt my nightmares for years to come. The storm intensified, rain pouring down in torrents, and we decided to lock all the doors and windows. We barricaded ourselves in the living room, clutching each other in fear. It felt like an eternity as we listened to Mr. Porter's demented ramblings outside. Then, the unimaginable happened. We heard the sound of shattering glass from the back of the house. My heart sank as we realized Mr. Porter had broken into our home. Sarah and I hid in a small closet, holding our breaths, praying he wouldn't find us. Footsteps echoed through the house, slow and deliberate. The sound grew closer and closer until it stopped just outside the closet door. I clutched Sarah tightly, tears streaming down her face. We could hear Mr. Porter breathing heavily on the other side. Come out, come out, wherever you are, he whispered in a sing-song voice. The minutes felt like hours as we remained hidden, the terror of our situation sinking in. Then, just as suddenly as he had arrived, we heard Mr. Porter's footsteps retreat, followed by the sound of him leaving the house. It seemed he had lost interest 
or perhaps found what he was looking for. After what felt like an eternity, we cautiously emerged from the closet and called the police. When they arrived, they found our home in disarray, but Mr. Porter was nowhere to be seen. It was as if he had vanished into thin air. The police conducted a search of Mr. Porter's house and found disturbing evidence of his obsession with us. There were photographs of our family taken from a distance, as well as journals filled with ramblings about us. It was clear that he had been watching us for a long time. In the end, Mr. Porter was never found. He had disappeared without a trace, leaving us with a chilling sense of unease. We moved away from that house shortly after the incident, but the memory of that rainy night and our creepy neighbor still haunts me to this day. I often wonder what would have happened if we hadn't hidden in that closet if Mr. Porter had found us. The thought sends a cold shiver down my spine, a reminder of the horrors that can unfold on a rainy night when the line between reality and nightmare blurs. Rainy nights have always had a way of casting a mysterious and eerie atmosphere over everything. It was on one such night, a few years ago, that I experienced a chilling encounter that still haunts my dreams. I had recently moved into a quaint old house in a quiet neighborhood on the outskirts of town. The house was surrounded by tall trees, which created a thick canopy, making the street even darker during the nights. My neighbors were friendly, and the neighborhood seemed peaceful at first glance. Little did I know that my perception of safety would soon be shattered. It was a particularly stormy evening when I first noticed something strange about my neighbor, Mr. Thompson. He lived in the house next door, a dilapidated, weather-beaten structure that always seemed to be in need of repairs. I'd seen him around before, but he was the kind of neighbor who kept to himself. However, on this rainy night, things took a sinister turn. The rain fell in torrents, the wind howling through the trees, and the thunder providing a constant background rumble. I was in my living room, engrossed in a book, when I heard a strange tapping sound coming from the window. I dismissed it initially, thinking it was just a branch swaying in the wind. But the tapping grew louder, more deliberate. Curiosity peaked. I got up and cautiously approached the window. What I saw froze my blood. It was Mr. Thompson, standing in his yard, drenched to the bone, and staring directly at me through the rain-splattered glass. His eyes were wild, his face contorted into a grotesque grin, and he was tapping his fingers against the window pane, producing that eerie sound. I quickly drew the curtains, my heart racing. What on earth was he doing out there in the middle of a storm, staring at my window like that? I tried to convince myself that it was a bizarre coincidence, that maybe he was just disoriented due to the weather, but deep down, a sense of unease had taken hold of me. Over the next few weeks, the strange occurrences continued. Whenever it rained at night, Mr. Thompson would be outside, tapping on my window with that unnerving smile. I decided to confront him, thinking that maybe he needed help or that he was just playing some weird prank. One rainy night, I mustered the courage to step out onto my porch. Mr. Thompson, I shouted over the rain. What are you doing? Is everything okay? He didn't respond, continuing to tap on the window his grin never wavering. It was then that I noticed something else, something even more disturbing. He was muttering something under his breath, words that I couldn't quite make out over the sound of the rain. Feeling a shiver run down my spine, I retreated back into my house. I didn't know what was going on, but I was certain that something was seriously wrong with my neighbor. I began to ask around the neighborhood about Mr. Thompson, trying to gather any information that might explain his bizarre behavior. What I discovered sent a chill through my bones. No one seemed to know much about him. He had moved into the house next door years ago, but he kept to himself, rarely interacting with anyone in the neighborhood. Rumors began to circulate that he was a recluse, a man with a dark and troubled past. As I delved deeper into the mystery, I uncovered something even more unsettling. There had been a series of disappearances in the area over the years, all of them occurring on rainy nights. The missing individuals had one thing in common. They all lived in houses bordering Mr. Thompson's property. The pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together in a horrifying way. 
My neighbor, Mr. Thompson, was somehow connected to these disappearances, and his obsession with rainy nights was undeniable. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was in grave danger. I decided to contact the police, sharing my concerns and the strange encounters I had experienced. They assured me they would look into it, but days turned into weeks, and nothing seemed to change. Mr. Thompson continued his eerie ritual, and the rainy nights became unbearable. One fateful night, as the rain poured relentlessly, I heard a loud crash coming from Mr. Thompson's house. It sounded like something had broken inside. Fear gnawed at me, but I knew I had to investigate. I grabbed a flashlight and cautiously made my way to his front door. The door was ajar, and the house was shrouded in darkness. I entered, my heart pounding in my chest. The smell that greeted me was putrid and sickening. It led me deeper into the house, toward the source of the crash. In the dim light of my flashlight, I stumbled upon a horrifying scene. Mr. Thompson was standing in the middle of a room, surrounded by an array of disturbing photographs. They were pictures of people, their faces twisted in terror, taken on rainy nights. My blood ran cold as I realized that these were the missing individuals from the neighborhood. Before I could react, Mr. Thompson turned to face me, his grin wider and more malevolent than ever. In his hand, he held a knife, stained with fresh blood. The realization hit me like a freight train. I was next. I bolted from the house, sprinting through the pouring rain, my heart racing faster than ever before. Behind me, I could hear Mr. Thompson's crazed laughter, his footsteps chasing me through the dark and stormy night. I reached my front door, fumbling for my keys, and finally managed to unlock it. I slammed the door shut and locked it behind me, panting and terrified. The rain continued to pour outside, but I was safe, at least for now. I called the police again, telling them everything I had seen in Mr. Thompson's house. They arrived quickly this time, and a tense standoff ensued. Mr. Thompson refused to come out peacefully, leading to a lengthy standoff. Eventually, the police were able to subdue him and take him into custody. Inside his house, they discovered the gruesome evidence of his crimes, a secret basement filled with the remains of his victims. It was a horrifying and chilling revelation, confirming my worst fears. In the end, Mr. Thompson was arrested, tried, and sentenced to life in prison for his heinous crimes. The neighborhood slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy, but the scars left by those rainy nights would never truly fade. To this day, I can't hear the sound of rain tapping against my window without feeling a shiver of dread. The memory of that rainy night and my creepy neighbor still haunts my dreams, a chilling reminder that true horror can lurk just next door, hidden behind a facade of normalcy and politeness.